Hey guys, welcome back to the Turbo V6 YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be going over my custom operating system version 3, basically going over the features that are contained within it, and hopefully I'll be able to test it, put it on the truck, make sure it works, and then hopefully soon you guys will be able to get your hands on it so that you can see how it works and uh, hopefully it helps the community and just pushes forward the stock ECUs. So stay tuned. Hey guys, all right, so we made it to the hotel and what better time to start going over my new custom operating system. So I think I'm really close to releasing it. I just wanna do a little bit more testing. I'm done making changes as far as adding features. Uh, I've already done some tests, so I think I've worked out the bugs, but I wanna make sure every single feature works as expected. Uh, but I wanted to go over basically kind of what it looks like in uh, Tuner Pro and how you'll be able to tune your vehicle um, with this custom operating system. So uh, first of all, it is only for the LS1 um, kind of a later version uh, PCM. So it's only going to work for the one megabyte um, PCM or the P59 PCM as a lot of people call it by, uh, but it basically came in uh, later LS powered vehicles and also later um, 4.3 liter V6 vehicles. So in the order of 2003 to 2005, um, but they were in a lot of trucks. Uh, so there should be a lot available. It's a extremely common PCM, um, but you know, it's just not as easy to add these kind of features to the P01 or 411 PCM. Uh, there's really just no space free space in that PCM. So before you ask, I'm not gonna be supporting that PCM anymore. Uh, it's just too much work and not worth the effort. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get into uh, what this operating system has to offer. So in Tuner Pro, I'm not sure what else I will wind up including in this XDF, which the XDF is basically, it defines the tables and uh, the interface of basically how you tune in Tuner Pro. So you basically be able to open up into the Boost OS uh, version three, and you'll see a, you know another set of folders that go into kind of each feature as I you know programmed it, um, so that you can only enable the features that you want and not have to worry about all of them. This operating system is limited to only patching onto um, the stock GM. OS um, that is the operating system number one two five eight seven six zero three. So it's an extremely common operating system. It has a bunch of features, um, but for people that are running a different operating system, you're pretty much on your own for getting this operating system to work in your application. There are a ton of tuning tunable parameters within the operating system to make it work for different vehicles. You can you know, I, I modify, you know, for the fuel gauge, you can modify uh, what information is sent to the gauges for, you know, whether or not you have um, uh, airbag lights and whatnot, what kind of air conditioning system you have. So there's a ton of information that could be, you know, a whole series of videos that I won't go into in this, uh, but generally you're gonna need to start with that operating system ID um, so you either grab a base file from a car or a truck that has that operating system that maybe closely matches your platform. So um, maybe you're even lucky enough that the P59 comes in your application with the correct operating system already. Then you really all you have to do is patch um, the, the custom OS on top of that. Um, but once you patch it, you don't have to tune anything. Uh, everything will come in basically a uh, turned off form. So none of these features will activate until you come in in Tuner Pro, enable the feature, and also tune the associated tables or parameters that go along with that feature. So let's go over the features real quick. So the first and foremost, I created this operating system for boosted applications. So the primary uh, feature that I added were boost tables or 
larger VE tables. So I got a little bit of pushback whenever I asked for you know opinions on this. So I did what I really didn't want to didn't really want to do or or really need to do, but I added two VE tables. Um, so if you want to run two bar with this OS, you can. If you want to run four bar, you can. Um, and it's really up to you to decide uh, which one you want to go with. Uh, basically all it takes is a, a flip of a switch so um, by default this will be zero so it will be using the factory uh, operating system and you can see here it is uh, it says zero is the factory table uh, for naturally aspirated because the, natu the factory tables only go up to 105 kPa so if you want to run a two bar I think it is yeah so one is two bar so it's simple as putting a one in there and bam uh, now you need to tune this two bar uh, VE map so this is the stock um, breakpoints so from 15 kPa up to 105 kPa you can put the stock values in there you can start with the stock values you'd be good to go uh, and then just basically scale from you know there up to 220 kPa uh, I went to 220 because it was basically the same size as what I had the four bar table at, um, but it was just for convenience. I'm not even sure if two bar um, map sensors go up to 220 kPa. I think they might only go up to like 205 or whatever. But again, this, this two bar map doesn't really limit the map sensor that you can run. You can run whatever map sensor you want. It's just the smaller the map sensor you run, the better resolution you're going to have in the sensor and on the table. Um, so you can run the four bar volumetric efficiency table and only run a two bar sensor, uh, but you're going to have less resolution. So that pretty much covers, you know, this, this flag that that's going to basically indicate what uh, VE table you're going to have and then also no matter which one you pick there you're going to enable this uh, boost spark adder versus manifold pressure so this is a 1D table that basically allows you to remove spark timing in reference to manifold pressure so you know at uh, 175 kPa you want to run you know one degree less timing you know, so you go in here and you can run, you know, minus one degree. And then you want to copy that, paste that down here, and then, you know, interpolate that or, or whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so, et cetera, et cetera. But that, that'll give you the ability to subtract timing with boost uh, because of the way that the stock GM map is set up for spark timing. Uh, it's based on grams per cylinder, so it's uh, it's capped at 1.2, and you could pretty easily go over 1.2 grams per cylinder. I've thought about in a future update for the custom operating system to add a engine RPM by um, manifold pressure spark tables that replace the factory gram per cylinder tables. Um, but uh, again, I don't really know if uh, people would really want that, but you know, put it out there and see if people want it. Uh, the next thing is boost control. I'm not going to go into this. You can uh, try to put as much information in these as, as possible, um, but you basically can use uh, boost control solenoid in the factory ECU. Uh, even in here, it tells you where to wire it, uh, what kind of solenoid I'd recommend. It's basically the one that everyone uses. And uh, there's even a lean boost cut safety in here, um, but we'll get back to that once we get into one of the other features. Uh, but again, you can just read the description of all these parameters uh, and just fill them out as necessary. Again, you only need to do this if you enable boost control. So if you don't have it enabled, you don't need to fill any of these out, uh, basically just like any of these. Um, next thing would be launch control. I had this in the prior version, there's really no change. You just need to fill out the parameters, read the description. Um, pretty much, you know, it's, uh, I don't know if I've gone over really these features previously, but uh, I could go a little bit more in depth on them in another video. 
But again, launch control, flat, sh flat foot shift, I've added those um, in my prior release. Same thing, spark cut limiter. So basically it would, uh, other than, rather than using a fuel cut, if you wanna have a spark cut, you can just raise the fuel cut and then lower, you know, this, have this spark cut limiter lower. Uh, it's really just up to you what you want, uh, what you want and what you don't want. The big thing is uh, desired air fuel ratio. So I've pretty much gotten rid of the uh, power enrichment. So this desired air fuel ratio basically replaces the need and or um, desire to use power enrichment. Uh, so again, you enable this table. Uh, you're gonna have two tables depending on, one or two tables depending on how um, your vehicle is set up. But it's basically in Lambda, uh, just because I've become most familiar with Lambda and it's the easiest to uh, kind of um, have everyone just understand rather than using gasoline air fuel ratio. It's uh, Lambda. So um, basically go in here and based on engine RPM and manifold pressure, you can put the desired air fuel ratio. But yeah, um, the one thing with this is you cannot use this to run leaner than uh, basically stoic. Uh, just because of the way the code is and the current in the operating system, it doesn't really allow you to uh, go leaner. Uh, basically, picks the richest of a bunch of air fuel ratios, like engine protection and a bunch of things. So, if you want to go leaner than stoic, you really just need to use the lean cruise function inside the stock ECU. Um, but again, I don't think that many people are, are kind of going to be using this custom OS and wanting to run super lean. Um, but yeah, so the other table is basically for uh, ethanol. So if you're running uh, flex fuel, this table will be utilized. Uh, you want to have all the flex fuel tables filled out as, you know, as kind of appropriate. Um, you can even start with a stock flex fuel table or a flex OS because um, this specific base operating system comes in a lot of vehicles already with flex enabled. Um, so that's a good starting point if you already don't have, uh, you know, a base file if you're starting from scratch. You can just find a flex enabled one and just start tweaking it. But uh, this will allow you to run a different air fuel ratio for gas versus uh, flex fuel. But yeah, I, I kind of wanted to be able to uh, lean out the uh, ethanol target versus pump gas, you know, 93, even 93 octane. I wanted to be able to lean it out so that, you know, there's a lot of cooling effects that ethanol has. So I could, I could lean it out a little bit more and just uh, have a different tune up. Um, but if you don't have flex enabled, then only the um, basically E0 or, you know, gasoline uh, table will be utilized. And then I added um, another flag to basically disabled closed loop fueling. So uh, if you want to be able to tune without the computer going into uh, closed loop, you previously had to, you know, override temp values or whatever, and I just wanted to put a flag in there that, you know, disable closed loop fueling, then you can go do some data logs, um, come back, to change the tune and then maybe re-enable it whenever you're done. But uh, it's a simple way to be able to just disable closed loop feeling. The other big one is wideband closed loop. So wideband closed loop will basically replace the data from the narrow band um, and use a wideband that you'll have to wire into basically the old EGR input. Again, I have the input listed. Um, so you basically just need to uh, you use that EGR input and then basically closed loop will work with a wideband. Uh, it will also target this desired air fuel if you enable it. If you do not enable it, it will use power enrichment. So it, it's really however you want to do it, um, but um, there's still some tweaking that I might have to do to make this closed loop work the way I really want it to. So um, 
this is where most of the testing I need to do uh, is really in. I want to make sure the closed loop is working. Uh, there's nothing kicking you out of closed loop incorrectly. So if, if there's something I need to change, I want to make sure that I change it before I release it out there. So that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, um, but stay tuned. Hopefully uh, we'll do some more testing and I'll get the truck out. Show you guys how this uh, operating system does. So I haven't done much to the truck. I really probably need to get a new alternator. If this thing's squealing like a freaking pig. Now that you guys are familiar with the features that are in the custom operating system, we'll go ahead and get it flashed to my you know, stock computer, my newest version, and we'll take it for a spin. And if you're wondering what's going on with the Firebird, basically nothing. It's just been sitting over here in the corner doing absolutely nothing. So yeah. There it is. Okay, just like I said, I wonder if you can hear that. That stupid alternator squealing like all hell, but you can see that uh, I just got in the closed loop. So I'm in closed loop. Y band is correcting, you know, short term fuel trims. Pretty low, but it's uh, just, you know, not quite up to temperature. Where's the coolant temperature? Oh, 142, so it's not quite warm yet. I have a closed loop kicking on at like 130, so. Uh, but yeah. yeah, trims are already coming down because it's getting up to temperature. Yeah, so uh, it looks like it's working. And right now I'm on pump gas, so I'm not gonna get in a crazy boost. I'll just um, keep the boost controller solenoid turned off for now and uh, go for a spin and uh, see how it does. Man, I really gotta get a new alternator. I'm hoping this was just a fluke, even though it's supposed to be a brand new alternator from AutoZone. Worked for a little bit without squealing, but now it's just like, yeah, just squeals away, even though it's charging great. Seems to be running good. No issues. I haven't driven it in like, I don't know, a couple months. I guess since probably February, since I got back from sick week, I haven't really driven it much. Just pulling it in and out of the garage. Uh, did some work on it that I, you know, my last video was about, just tweaking some stuff. So we'll make sure we have no leaks from all that work and uh, make sure the new custom operating system is working as expected. some of the logs everything looks pretty good uh, it seems like I'm gonna need to do some more tweaking on the BE table and potentially uh, the PID uh, or really the P&I terms for the closed loop fuel control um, and obviously this was intended for a narrow band sensor so putting a wide band sensor that's much more accurate into the loop without changing any of the PID parameters uh, I kind of expected it to somewhat work, but I figured things would need to be tuned in. So I may hold off on that until I get um, back to the track, or maybe I should really just do a dyno session to see how it works and uh, really dial it in. So yeah, we'll get back to it. I also need to get rid of the pump gas that's in it and put some E back in, and then we can really turn the boost up. So thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you later.